Okay, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think I can finish this in one more part. So this is part five, rules and best practices for Inkscape. Um, I would say the first best practice, which is not listed in here, is you've just watched all these videos and they might be a little bit confusing. My suggestion would be is start um, watching the Inkscape videos that uh, occur after this and then come back later on and watch this set of series again. I know the entire course building series is very long and that's daunting. Um, I'm sorry, but this is the best way we have to do it. Okay, so let's see here. Inkscape rules and best practices. I think I touched just about on all these in the, in the earlier videos, but it's good to summarize these. First of all, do not cut through bunkers and lakes. Do not put any shapes on top of your bunkers and lakes. Remember, bunkers and lakes have an, that should be 18 centimeter inset for blending, and they also have that uh, 12 centimeter outset. So you need to keep the bunkers and lakes on the top of everything else so they cut through everything underneath them. Do not cut through bunkers and lakes. Um, the, you'll probably get errors. If not, you're going to run into some problems that are going to look really funky later on in Unity. Okay, so don't. Just leave them on the top. Um, keep some distance between your shape and the edge of your terrain. So let me show you in here. Um, here, let me zoom into this area down here because it is um, a tight area. So you can see down here, I kept some distance between this area, this these shapes down here and the edge of my terrain. Um, I think there's a probably a good 10 meters down here. Make sure you keep that distance. Do not have it go over and do not have it like barely touching. You can run in some errors and some issues. So do not touch those shapes to the edge of your terrain. Leave some gaps in there so that your outer can be created easily. Um, avoid creating shapes that run uh, that barely touch or run parallel for long distances. Uh, so the reason for this is, let me show you uh, an example here. So you can see here, this looks like a shape that runs parallel to this cart path for some period of time. Um, it doesn't in actuality. So if I highlight this cart path and I hide it, you can see that it actually overlaps very well into that cart path, okay? It doesn't run like along the line. It's more kind of comes down here, if you see here even closer. It really connects, uh, goes, I, I made it purposely so it kind of comes the middle of the cart path, okay? Let's see here. There, you can see it a little bit better now. And then when it does leave again, I kind of make it so it cuts through quickly and then comes back. This one didn't cause a problem, but it's probably better practice to have it really come um, uh, down more like that instead. Okay, and uh, make it more perpendicular, I'd say, to the other shape. But this one cut fine, so you get that idea. So avoid that um, and make sure that if they do touch, make sure they completely overlap. You don't want them barely touching. You don't want them running parallel with small gaps for a long period of time. Um, there's the next one is kind of like, okay, so it says merge overlapping same color shapes. Careful. Um, because if you have, let's say, two, you have a fairway, but you drew that fairway with two different shapes, but they're both colored as fairway, and then the overlap, well, now you're going to have a blend, okay, between the two fairways, and on one side, that blend maybe goes to your semi, so it'll blend from semi, uh, it'll bl blend from fairway to semi, but then when your two fairways meet, and there's that, it's going to have a semi blend in it. So my suggestion would be is try to keep same color shapes. Um, don't have two of the same color shapes overlapping, okay? And if you do union them together using the union tools, which is more of an advanced topic, be careful because you'll also get these things called double nodes in those, and that's a bad thing. Those double nodes cause issues. So um, be careful with same color shapes that overlap. I would try to draw, draw same color shapes as one shape altogether. Donuts. Uh, you cannot have donuts. That is a rule. Okay. So what is a donut? A donut, for example, if you're let's think about drawing a cart path, which is a three meter wide cart path. If you were to draw that cart path and come back and meet the end to the beginning, okay, so that it is a big giant O, that is a donut because it has a distinct outer edge and a distinct inner edge. It's a big O. It's a donut. Um, you cannot have those, all right? 
and you're being like, well, how do I do my car pass? I'll show you here in a second. Um, you can do things like punch through them. Well, let me just show you. It's, this is easier one that's easier show, uh, shown. So let's say this is your course, and you can see I have cart paths right here. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, isn't that one big giant loop right here? Uh, for example, right here. So this cart path goes up, and it comes back down the other side, and then it comes back up again. That is a donut, except for the fact that what I did is I ended the cart path. Ah, I did. I zoomed out here. Uh, where'd it go? Here it is. Except for the fact that I cut out a little piece right here. So you can see that is, in fact, not a donut because I put a notch in here. You can see notches in my cart pass in several. So there's a notch, there's a notch, there's a notch. So this is not a donut. Um, this, you can see right here, this would be example. So this is a fairway. And you can see this is not a donut. Why? Because if I click on this green right here and I hide it, you can see I'm punching through that fairway to make a hole. The fairway itself is not a donut. All right. Let me see if I can give you another example. This happens a lot to me in like parking lots. I think there's a parking lot up here. Yeah, here we go. There's a good example. So here is a parking lot. And in this parking lot, there was some landscaping done that had it as pine straw. So there'll be like shrubs and bushes separating the parking spaces. You can see here that the parking lot itself, okay, is just this big solid shape. And then I punch through this shape right here. I'm punching through to form a hole, but the parking lot itself does not make a donut, okay? So now you get the idea, you know what a donut is. You cannot have donuts. If so, there's two ways you avoid them. You put a notch, like I did here, or you punch through it to get what you want, okay? Uh, back to slides here. Hole 99, we talked about this a lot, is obsolete, not recommended. You might recall that in here, my whole 99 in the olden days uh, in V3 and the beginning of V4, this green deep rough you see here would be one giant shape called whole 99. We don't do that anymore. You can give it a whirl, but most likely you're going to have errors and troubleshooting it is a big old pain in the ass. All right. So just avoid it. Uh, you want to do into small individual shapes encompassing your course like I did in here. Okay. These, uh, you'll see this whole 10. So there's some shape right in there that I did that start encompassing things. So you can see in various areas, I just did smaller shapes like here. Uh, there's a rough area that I made. Oh, that's a fair way. Let me see if I can get you a good example here. Um, yeah, so there's like a uh, rough area that I drew encompassing that area right there. There's no such thing as a whole 99 anymore. Um, what you see, this is what was called WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get with V4. In other words, uh, you can rename all the shapes. You can rename them, okay, uh, from the default that Inkscape gives you, but it ain't going to help you out later on. Okay, so when things go into Blender and they get a Unity, those all get overwritten. So all that time you spent renaming your shapes in Inkscape doesn't do you any good later on. Um, and organize however you want. So you can put everything into folders like I did. I like to do that, but it's kind of a waste of time because those folders disappear later on inside of Blender and in Unity, you have to create all new folders. I'd like to do it just for my organization, but the guys who build courses really fast do not use folders. It's a waste of their time. Okay. I'm slow. I build courses really slow. I'm artistic and tedious. Um, cheers. You made it through Inkscape theory. All right. So move on and you can start drawing some stuff. Uh, gra grab yourself a beverage. Uh, congratulations.